Hello everyone and welcome to this evening's special presentation called Look Great. So let me ask you something. Have you ever or always wanted to change something about your appearance that makes you feel uncomfortable? Do you want to look younger? Or do you want to just feel better about yourself? Well, this first of its kind patient webinar is for everyone of all ages who cares about their appearance. And we're going to talk about topics you care about, such as quick fixes for busy people, how to keep your skin young indefinitely, powerful aging fixes, easy ways to restore your youth, stop the sagging skin without surgery, looking great at any age, and so much more. So tonight, in the comfort and privacy of your own home, you'll discover how and what you can do to look great and feel fantastic. You're going to see lots of before and after photos, and you'll hear patient stories to learn what's possible for you to have the look you want. Now, by the way, I'm Catherine Maley, your host for this evening's Get Together, and I work with Dr. Flaherty and his lovely wife, Kristen, and I brought this idea to them to do this patient webinar because I, like you, care about my appearance, and I want to look as good as I feel. I want to stay competitive in the marketplace since I'm a businesswoman, and I'm single, so I want to stay attractive to the opposite sex. Now, I'm also curious about what's available today because it's changing so quickly in terms of procedures and technologies to turn back the clock. So what we'll talk about next is I'm going to introduce, let me just tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to introduce Dr. Flaherty in a moment since we have many friends and family members of patients who don't know Dr. Flaherty yet. And then Dr. Flaherty will then present different options available to you to look your best. Now, I'll be monitoring the questions and comments that come in, so please feel free to use the question box to the right of your computer screen if you have a question or a comment as we go along. We're going to then address them at the end, and they're anonymous, so you can talk and type freely. And then you want to stay tuned in since we'll have a, an exclusive special offer for those who came on tonight's call. Then I'm going to watch the clock, and we're going to keep this as close to an hour as we can. So. Who is Dr. Flaherty? Well, for starters, he's a double board certified in oculoplastic surgery as well as in facial cosmetic surgery. Now, Dr. Flaherty's been practicing in Southwest Florida for 20 years, and he's performed more than 20,000 procedures. And that's really important since you want to go to someone with proven skills and expertise. Now, on a personal note, Dr. Flaherty is a devoted husband, father, coach, and triathlete. And I just have to show you his adorable kids. He's got three girls. By the way, Dr. Flaherty, how old are they in this photo? Oh, at this time, I think there are 10, 8, and 6. Okay, oh. now, how cute is this? And here they are now. The same, I love this. I hope they do this every, how many, now how many years has gone by? It's about five years. There's 16, 14, and 11 now. So. Oh, that's so cute. So I put together their very own before and after photos. Now, they're still <laughs> adorable, and they're still young, and they don't need any help yet. Now, with that, I'm going to pass this off to Dr. Flaherty, and then I'll go ahead and monitor the question box. So please, take it away, Dr. Flaherty. Right. Well, welcome, everybody. This is our uh, native voyage into the webinar world, but it's uh, very exciting having attended several before and several with Catherine. Um, we're really excited to bring this into our own practice and bring this into your homes as well, so welcome. Uh, let's go to the next slide here. So, um, the pyramid of rejuvenation is really a concept I came up with several years ago, but it's still very pertinent today. And, this is sort of the universe of what's available in facial cosmetic procedures. So when we look at the pyramid, the base of the pyramid says non-invasive. That's really dealing with non-invasive procedures uh, or technologies. Uh, and that's been actually one of the fastest growing areas of cosmetic facial work is all the new products and procedures and skin techniques that can non-invasively rejuvenate your face. So we're going to start at the base of the pyramid and work our way to the top. Um, as you can see, the middle layer of the pyramid or the middle tier is minimally invasive. In that category, we're going to talk about uh, the liquid facelift, which would be the injectable things we can do in the office, Botox and fillers, which has been a very, very hot topic in recent years. Uh, and then at the apex of the pyramid, we'll, and we'll finish the talk talking about the common surgical procedures and, and you know, emphasize there the importance of 
there are certain things we can only achieve through surgery. So although the base of the pyramid continue, continues to build very, very rapidly, um, it's not going to supplant surgery when that's indicated. And we'll talk about when the time is right for surgery as well. So uh, first thing is skin. And this is something that for much of my career I've overlooked. Um, we've had a skincare line for over 10 years and we've really rededicated ourselves to, to improving this in recent years because now that I'm 52, you know, I've noticed that skin care does make a difference in your appearance and uh, my estheticians uh, and PA are always on me about sun protection when I'm out doing the triathlons and out in the sun and, uh, you know, we all, it catches up with us all eventually and so I'm a believer because now, you know, I've had to really practice what I preach uh, because of the years of sun exposure and there's no question that you know, um, therapeutic skin care makes a huge difference in your appearance. And uh, for many people, it's a great place to start because it's completely non-invasive. Uh, uh, the entry point's pretty easy with respect to, you know, coming in and having skin treatments, facials, getting on a good product line, um, starting to rebuild some collagen, get rid of the dead surface tissues. Um, it can really make a dramatic improvement in the quality of your skin and the appearance of your skin most importantly. The second thing is anybody that progresses to something more, whether that be surgery or a laser, even if it's an office-based laser, they always do better if the skin is in better condition. And so it really makes sense to start with good skin care and to end with good skin care. So when we finish a major rejuvenation procedure such as a facelift, uh, or some type of a laser to rejuvenate the skin. We want to maintain what we've achieved. Um, and so it's really a three-step process with skin care. It's cleanse, treat, and protect. And by protect, we mean sunblock. That's the most important thing we can do, especially all of us living in Florida. The treatment can be a lot of different things. There are a variety of different active agents from Retin-A, to glycolic peels, to salicylic peels, to other types of uh, peptides and new cosmeceuticals that can rejuvenate your skin. That really needs to be individualized based on your skin and really in the hands of a skilled esthetician. So that's, that's what we recommend. You get a skincare program set up with a skilled esthetician and a, and a strong product line that's therapeutically based. Okay, so let's move into the procedures. We're now in the non-invasive procedure category, the bottom of the pyramid. And as I mentioned, we'll work our way up. The Polymer Starlight -like system is a fantastic laser system. I've owned a Polymer laser since 1990. I think we're on our fourth or fifth one now. And it's a fantastic company that is committed to scientific advancement and it is, brings those applications to the clinical realm very rapidly. And um, it's, it's made it a really good company to be with because they are constantly giving us uh, improved versions of what they do. And uh, so their laser system called the Polymer Starlux, and in fact, we just bought the newest one, which is called the Polymer Icon. I haven't even made the slide up because it just arrived this week. Um, is a fantastic platform for non-surgical rejuvenation of the face. So we'll show you. And I think one of the most useful treatments for the polymer is what we call the photofacial. And this is a non-invasive laser where um, it's, a, it's a flash of light energy that's delivered to the skin uh, from a crystal handpiece. The newest laser they have has got a very nice chilled tip, so it makes the laser with minimal discomfort. And the energy from that handpiece will be absorbed by the reds and the blue, uh, browns in your skin. So the sunspots absorb the energy and the vessels do. So you can see a very typical sun damaged face on the left, the before slide. And the slide on the right is actually several months after her treatment. She was in for a facial and had a cooling gel. That's why the face looks moist. But the beauty of this technology, especially with its newer version, you can get most of this result with a single treatment. It'll be absorbed by the vessels and shrink and close the vessels. And it'll be absorbed by the pigment in the surface of the skin. And it'll lift this um, uh, pigment to the surface and it'll flake off. So it turns those brown spots dark brown and they will gradually flake off over a week or two. So it can really nicely clear the complexion from the typical uh, sun damaged uh, browns and reds that we see. 
Uh, the beauty of this technology and what makes it really superior to former treatments is that you can treat any part of the body because you're not removing the epidermis. You're not taking off the skin. There's no need for ointments. There's no need for avoiding the sun or even missing, you know, being out of work or normal activity at all. It's, um, it's, it's often used in the neck and the chest as well. As you can see, modeled pigmentation of the chest is very common with uh, sun exposure, as is it on the hands and arms. And so these are very common areas. And you can see how nice it is where you have the model pigmentation before and with the treatment, the pigment is lifted and you get a homogeneous color and texture to the skin. Um, this laser will also tighten the skin, remove some of the fine lines and creases and kind of smooths the skin. Everybody reports their skin feels smoother after this procedure. Um, so it does qualitatively improve the skin as well. And here's a fairly dramatic example of vessels. And as this is a, a male who's got sebaceous skin, and that's prone to getting these really dilated vessels. And really, this was a problem. We didn't have a good treatment before the IPLs came out back in the 90s. And now we have this fantastic non-invasive treatment where we can just shrink down these vessels. So somebody with as many vessels as this is probably going to require maybe a second treatment, perhaps even a third treatment. But um, you can nice, nicely non-invasively lift out these vessels. And this is uh, really helpful for patients with rosacea who get the flushing or have those dilated capillaries on the skin, which us fair-skinned people tend to get um, with age. And so now we have a really nice non-invasive treatment for that as well. Laser hair removal, I just throw this in because that their, their platform for laser hair removal is excellent. Um, so any unwanted hair that has pigment in it, which means it has to be brown or black or gray, works very well with a series of treatments to you know, destroy the follicles and lift the hair out. Um, laser hair removal still does require a series of treatments because hair grows in cycles. So when you treat it one time, you're only going to get the follicles that are growing. The ones that are in the resting state will not be affected. Um, so you have to treat it sort of once a month for several months. Usually it's um, six to eight treatments over about a year. But it's very, very effective at, at diminishing or eliminating unwanted hair that does have pigment in it. For the very fine, fine Laguna hairs that we get, uh, laser hair removal doesn't work for that. And we typically use um, dermaplaning and some other techniques with our estheticians. Um, one of the holy grails for skin rejuvenation has been skin tightening non-invasively. You know, for years we've had, you know, CO2 laser, erbium laser. We know we can re reduce or eliminate a lot of wrinkles with that. But those procedures do have some downtime. Um, so the, the really holy grail has been, can we actually tighten the skin and eliminate wrinkles without downtime? And really, until recently, my answer to that question would have been no. But recently, I think we've made some breakthroughs in some of these non-invasive technologies. And sure enough, I think Polymer is, again, leading the way with their handpiece. It's called the Polymer 1540. This is a fractional skin tightening handpiece. But the key to this is it is a non-ablative handpiece. So, the way this works, it's, again, contact handpiece that's placed on the skin. It delivers points of energy through the skin, but it does not disrupt the epidermis. So again, you're not removing the skin at all. But it will disrupt collagen beneath the skin, and that stimulates your body into a healing response, which generates new collagen that will actually tighten and smooth the skin. Uh, because it's not removing the surface of the skin, again, no downtime. You don't need to put ointment on. You don't need to avoid the sun. You will have some redness and swelling for you know an hour or two afterwards, but that's it. You can put on uh, your makeup uh, and the next day be out and about doing your normal activities. Well, the pictures are the thousand words, and these uh, are the kind of pictures that really blew me away. If if this if you told me this was a patient we did an erbium resurfacing or CO2 resurfacing, I'd say yeah, that's a nice result. You know, that's what we expect. But when you tell me this is non-ablative uh, skin tightening, it's, it's fantastic. And so what's the catch? Well, the catch with non-ablative is that it does take a little longer to get this kind of a result. So you have to do a series of treatments where we could use a CO2 in one treatment, get rid of these wrinkles. 
with uh, the fractional laser, we need uh, approximately four treatments. We do one a month. Uh, we separate it by a month because we want the new collagen to be built up and then to retreat. Uh, and you see continued tightening and smoothing of the skin for six months after the last treatment. So you get a gradual tightening and smoothing of the skin. But again, I think this is a fantastic option for people with mild degrees of wrinkles uh, who are interested in improvement and don't have downtime. Um, these treatments are very quick right in the office. In fact, with the newest laser, I think they can do the treatment in like 10 minutes. Um, and you can be back to your normal activities. And you'll get this gradual buildup of collagen and tightening over time. Um, next, I want to talk a little bit about Althera. And um, I think you know, you'll see a common theme developing here, that in the non-invasive world, we now have really potent and exciting technologies, but they do take longer to give you a result. And that's, you know, that's one of the catches there, of course. Uh, at this point in time, the technology has gotten to the point where we can get meaningful improvement in some of these areas of facial aging. But it does take a little more time. And in some cases, it's not going to give you the same result as you can get with surgery. Uh, but again, there's a trade-off. You don't have any downtime. So therapy has been one of the really hottest topics, and it is something we incorporated in our practice uh, this past year. Uh, because again, pictures are worth a thousand words. And when I really investigated and met with the CEO and the company uh, people uh, and started looking at the results they were achieving, it was really quite significant. Um, this is a novel technology. So if any of you are science geeks out there, I just want to digress for a minute and explain. Uh, Altherapy is ultrasound energy, and so that's new. It's different. It's not a laser. It's not a light source. It's actually ultrasound. And when you're doing these treatments, you have a screen that looks like just the regular ultrasound screen. You'd see it typically when you're um, imaging, let's say, a, a, a fetus when somebody's pregnant. Um, so it's really interesting because you get to image the face, and you get to see the layers of the face. And the way this works is it's actually focused ultrasound energy. You can focus at different layers of the tissue. Uh, for this particular application of lifting the face, we focus it at the SMAS layer, which is the suspensory layer beneath the skin. And it will heat up that tissue in several different points along a line where you'll get instant tightening of the collagen. And then again, the heat will stimulate new collagen production. So again, you'll see some new collagen start to form and tighten over the course of two to three months, sometimes up to four months. So uh, as we've mentioned before, you'll see some initial immediate tightening, but gradually you'll get additional tightening over two to four months with this technology. Um, but in my, in my opinion, this is the first technology I've seen that gives us significant tightening of the lower face and neck non-surgically. And there's been a lot out there, as you may be aware. I don't want to really want to bash anybody else's technology, but um, this one is uh, one that I, I felt was worth uh, incorporating and offering for our patients. So let's just look at a couple patients. Here's a woman who clearly would benefit from a lower face and neck lift. I mean, if she came in for consultation to today, I would say, you know, lower face and neck lift is your first, second, and third choice because far and away we could give her a tremendous result and long-lasting and a you know, great improvement. However, she elected to try Althera and that's okay. Um, it is, like I said, non-surgical, non no downtime. This procedure takes about 45 minutes in the office. Uh, there's very little swelling with Althera because you're not driving energy through the skin. You're focusing the energy beneath the skin. Um, there's a little bit of discomfort with the treatment, which we handle with uh, Motrin, and you can take a sedative if you need one. Uh, and then you get this gradual tightening and lifting. And, you know, although her post-treatment result, and this is post-two treatments, I should add, um, is not equivalent to doing a facelift, it's significantly better than she was before. So there's a significant improvement in the jawline and the neckline. Uh, and, you know, that's real. Um, you don't have to try to convince people that it's different. It clearly is different and better uh, with the Althera treatment. So um, I think let's show another slide as well. 
again, here's one that I would say, gee, you know, a younger male with a heavy neck and thick skin, um, you know, facelift with neck liposuction certainly would give him a fantastic result. But I'm very impressed with how well this worked with Ulthera alone, the amount of tightening and lifting. Uh, you know, you can just look at his jawline where there's more shadowing post-op because he's got a much more defined jawline. And the improvement in the uh, mid and anterior neck is really quite remarkable for a non-surgical procedure. Uh, again, not as good as you can get with a facelift, but for a no, no downtime procedure that's done in 45 minutes in the office, it's a pretty nice improvement in the appearance of his lower face and neck. So Althera is, uh, you know, finding its niche here. And in my opinion, I think it's best used for people who are not quite ready for a facelift. In other words, they don't have that same degree of laxity as the first patient I showed. Or for patients who perhaps have had a facelift in the past and are starting to experience some early laxity or stretching of the tissues um, to tighten and, and smooth it out. Um, you know, obviously we're seeing people of all ages be interested in this. And, you know, perhaps with improvements in the technology in the years to come, we'll be able to even see further improvements in those uh, types of results. Um, I'd like to now jump into the middle pyramid. And that lower pyramid, as I mentioned, the, not, the lower tier of the pyramid, the non-invasive, is, you know, obviously a very, very active area, as uh, we just discussed. Um, in the middle pyramid, I'm just going to talk about a couple, a couple of things. Um, we're going to talk about Botox and the new type of Botox, which is Diceport. These are both FDA-approved forms of botulinum toxin that both work very well. And we're going to talk about facial fillers, because these are really complementary procedures that are done in our office uh, and uh, yield very significant improvement in many of the aging changes. So let's uh, progress into this. So the Azul Liquid Facelift is really just a term that I came up with to de describe this comp combined treatment of using Botox or Diceport in addition to fillers to rejuvenate the face. And these are done, of course, in the office with just numbing cream to the skin. Um, we do use a little ice as well uh, through tiny little injections to, to, um, to treat. Uh, and again, we use a little bit of ice afterwards to try to minimize the risk of swelling and bruising. Uh, but, you know, consider these no downtime procedures. Uh, and let's talk about how it works and why this has become so popular. So you, you may all be somewhat familiar with Botox, but botulinum toxin type A, there's now uh, actually three companies that have a, a product approved on the market. But the two best ones, in my opinion, are Botox by Allergan Pharmaceutical and Diceport by Metasys. And what this does is it's injected in very, very small concentrations into specific muscles in the face, and it temporarily weakens the muscle. And many of the creases and lines on our face, such as the frown lines between our brows, which we'll show you in a minute, are created by muscle activity. So the upper face in particular, the frown lines between our eyebrows, the horizontal lines on our forehead that form from lifting our brows, and the sort of crow's feet around our eyes from squinting. Those are all called dynamic wrinkles because it's the muscle activity that creates the wrinkle. And therefore, if you can relax the muscle, you can then soften the wrinkle. And that's kind of how this works. And so a small um, injection into very selected areas can smooth, smooth the skin and eliminate the crease. Um, you know, this slide just talked a little bit about what I just mentioned. Diceport I use the most because I think it has a little quicker onset of action. So it's my favorite treatment, um, although we do use both products um, because they're both fairly popular. Um, but here's what can be achieved. And I think this is where you, know, you see the most dramatic result with Diceport or Botox is these you know, frown lines between our brows. So picture on the top very active frown lines. A lot of us have this frown line. Uh, and a little bit of Botox, you know, a couple little tiny injections in there. It diffuses into the muscle, it relaxes, and it not only smooths the frown line, but it actually lifts the brow and smooths the skin as well. Botox actually does shrink down some of the sebaceous glands, so it can reduce some of the sebaceous glands on the skin and smooth the skin as well. Um, 
Another example, and I think in this patient you can really appreciate how much lifting of the brow you can get with Botox because we can weaken the muscles that pull the brow down and leave the muscles that lift the brow intact, you can get actually a very nice what we call injectable or chemical brow lift. Now, you know, I must add at this point that if you have a lot of laxity and you have severe, moderate or severe brow ptosis because the tissues are loose, Botox isn't going to lift that brow. But if you have a lot of muscle activity that contributes to the brow being down, as this patient has in the upper picture, then a little bit of Botox works you know, wonderful to lift the brow and smooth the frown lines. And men as well, you can see here again, frown lines and post-treatment very smooth. So Botox has been around for a while and been used for a while. Facial fillers really have become more popular in the last 10 years. And that's because we've seen a lot of new fillers enter the marketplace that have improved uh, the effects. Uh, and the biggest improvement is now we have fillers that um, last longer and are do more than originally all we had was collagen, which was very thin and watery and didn't last very long, and it was not as potent as the fillers we have now. So this has kind of opened up the whole thing. The other thing that's really made fillers, you know, become to the forefront is the fact that we now really recognize so much of facial aging is volume loss. You know, we lose volume from our face with age, and as we do, we get more hollow and sunken. And when you start to add volume back, it's amazing how well you can rejuvenate the face. And so I think in the early days of rejuvenation, it was always about tightening and lifting. Now it's a lot more about filling. You want to have a youthful appearance, but it should be a soft, full youthful appearance, like the pictures of our girls in the beginning. You know, really youthful beauty is soft. It's not tight, and it certainly isn't flat or deflated. It's soft and full. So let's talk about the fillers. Uh, very busy slide, and I don't want to confuse everybody, but these are the four main fillers uh, that we use in our practice that I think each have a role in facial rejuvenation. So I'll try to kind of break this down uh, for you. The top category is called hyaluronic acid products. The two products in that category are Restylin and Juvederm. Um, these are sort of the workhorse fillers because this is a very natural product. It's a protein. It is naturally present in our skin and in our joints. It attracts and retains water, and it's a lubricating protein. Um, it's made synthetically in the laboratory. It's sterile, and it's obviously it's identical to our own native protein. So there's no risk of an allergy with these products, which is fantastic. Because it is clear and gel-like, we can inject it at any levels of the tissue. And uh, so it's a very, very versatile filler. So these are... Uh, the ones we use the most. I like Restylane uh, the best for under the eyes and kind of uh, Juvederm I think I like slightly better for lips. It's a little bit smoother in the lips, but they're both fantastic products that work very well. The second class of products is called Hydroxyapatite, and there's one product in that class. It's called Radius. Um, this is distinctly different. This is a natural product. It's a injectable that has beads of calcium phosphate floated in a gel. When you inject it, the gel will disappear in about two months, but the calcium phosphate beads will stay, and your body will grow some collagen in and around those beads, and that complex of the beads and the collagen will last several years. And so this is what we call the stimulatory filler because it will stimulate your body to make some collagen and add volume to the tissue. Um, and that has the benefit of lasting longer. The last filler is similar in that it is a stimulatory filler, and it's called Artifil. It's a little bit different because it is not natural, unlike the two above it. Artifil has PMMA, polymethylmethacrylate. That's a synthetic bead that is inert. It's well tolerated in the body, but it's not native to our system. It's floated in bovine collagen, which is the original cow collagen, um, and there's a small percentage of people that do react to bovine collagen. So for Artifil, we need to do a patch test to make sure you don't react to it before we use it. But the benefit of Artifil is those PMMA beads, your body will never break those down. They are tiny, tiny beads. They're the size of a red blood cell, so you don't see them or feel them at all. But we inject them into the tissues, and they'll stimulate some new collagen, 
and the beads will stay there forever. And this is a nice product. It, it, it's well tolerated and it's especially good for tougher creases around the mouth or uh, lip, uh, upper lip line or corners of the mouth or nasal labial folds. And you know, some patients come in and they've done their research and they know this is the longest lasting filler and that's what they want. And my experience with it has been very favorable. We usually don't start with this because, again, it isn't as natural as the other fillers. But for selected patients, it is a very effective filler and, and the longest lasting filler. OK, again, let's see some pictures. This is a lot more fun. What do these do? So here's a patient you can see who's got a thin face, lots of deflation, and lots of creases around the mouth, uh, very common. And where Botox has really helped us smooth the upper part of the face, Fillers have helped us smooth the lower part of the face. And so you can see lots of deflation around the mouth, lots of creases and lines, some deflation of the lips. So we use Radius, that stimulatory filler, deep to fill in the hollows around the mouth. And then we use Restylin superficially over the top for the fine lines, creases, and also we augmented her lips, added some volume to the lips. Um, you'll notice her lips have a natural shape, very important. Natural results are very achievable in everything we do with good aesthetic judgment. Um, you want to make the lip the size and shape that's appropriate for that patient's face and their age. Adding some volume to the lips can be very nice to make your lips look better. We're not looking to, to make them look unnatural. You need to maintain the natural shape and the natural contours when we do this. And I should add that these results are immediately after the treatment. So these are the patients, you know, right as they're leaving after we've done the treatment. Um, here's a patient that has what we call, you know, prominent frown lines. And this is very, very common, these big frown lines at the corner of the mouth. Because with talking and movement, we break down those tissues and we start to get these creases that make us look sad or unhappy. Um, using uh, radius deep in these areas works fantastic. It's a strong filler. It'll fill in the crease and lift the corner of the mouth. And again, this is immediately after the treatment. She does have a light coat of makeup on uh, before she leaves. You can see how happy she looks post-operatively, and that's really just because we've taken away the frown lines. You know, by filling that in and lifting the corner of the mouth, we've neutralized the frowning that she has in the pre-op picture. And it's just a wonderful treatment that can really change your appearance in a positive way. And men as well, and I, I present this patient because he was an interesting gentleman who came in for consultation regarding a facelift. So I started talking to him about what bothered him, and he said what he was wearing a mustache and a beard at the time, so I couldn't see these frown lines. And he said, well, it's these frown lines, but I've kept a beard and a mustache to keep them covered so no one sees them. And I said, gee, why don't you shave and come back and let me take a look at them because we may be able to do something with these uh, you know, you may not need a facelift. So he did shave and come back. And sure enough, he's just a perfect candidate for fillers. So we did radius for him. And the post-op picture on the right is three months after the treatment. So you can see that this is holding up quite nicely at three months, really taking away a lot of the frown line. And it's, in his case, that was the thing that most bothered him. And uh, of course, uh, we don't really treat creases at the corner of the mouth with facelifts. We treat them with fillers. And so uh, to his pleasant surprise, he was able to do that right in the office. So lower eyelid hollowing. This is an area that's been of great interest to me, um, and I do a lot of these treatments. And I, I was trained first as an ophthalmologist and then as a facial cosmetic surgeon, and this has just been sort of a keen interest to me for me because I do a lot of eyelid work. Uh, uh, and I do these every single day in the office in the clinic is lower eyelid hollowing. Because as we lose fat from our face, especially from the cheek and mid face, we develop this hollowing under our eyes. And virtually by age 30, everybody has a little bit of this, some more than others. You can see this patient has fairly dramatic hollowing under her eyes, very deep, deep, dark circles. And it's been interesting because in the early part of my career, we all kind of agonized over how do we get rid of dark circles, lotions and potions. and take out fat and tighten the skin and laser the skin and peel the skin. And then fillers came along and I started injecting Restylane in here and bam, the dark circles go away. And it's a great treatment because you can numb this up with a little topical numbing gel, 
do the treatment with a couple little injections right in the office. There's minimal discomfort because the numbing creams work so well on the lower eyelid. And the post-op you see on the right here, this is a year out from the treatment. And the great thing about Restylane in the lower eyelid is that it can be permanent. I have patients now five, six, seven years out from one treatment with Restylane under the eyes who still have retained it all. You know, some people will gradually lose it over a couple years time but everybody retains it at least for a year to two years in this area. And it's a wonderful way to rejuvenate the lower lid mid-face area as well as you know, eliminating the dark circles that make us look tired. Um, and so I think it's very powerful. In fact, this next, oh, we, I guess we took that other one out. Um, so in summary, uh, uh, the um, uh, Azul Liquid Facelift really is, is a very, very powerful in-office tool to rejuvenate your face. And you know, here's just an example of a young, young lady who's obviously very attractive to begin with, but has a lot of the changes that we notice with age, some wrinkling of the forehead, wrinkles between the eyebrows, some crow's feet around the eyes, a little bit of hollowing under her eyes, um, some frown lines around the mouth. Um, and some deflation of the lips. So we did uh, some uh, dice port for the glabella between the eyebrows, for the forehead, for the crow's feet around the eyes. We did some wrestling for her lower eyelid. I did some radius for the mid face and it's really a wonderful, wonderful treatment. You can get a beautiful lift to the mid face by just placing some radius deep to the cheek fat pad and it gives you this nice lift. If you notice the slide on the right, how much fuller her, her cheeks are, and you can see in this picture even better. Nice, big, full, round cheeks, which are very youthful. And we lose that over time. The fat does sag, and we lose a lot of it from the lateral cheek. So placing some radius in there can give you an instant improvement in that mid-face contour. And then we did use some wrestling for her lips and a little bit around the mouth for the fine lines increases. So, you know, really, a, 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 a liquid facelift. I mean, with injectables only, we've given her a complete rejuvenation of the face, and again, with no downtime. So last but not least, let's get to the apex of the pyramid. And I have to admit, a clinic has become a lot more fun since we have a lot of these tools, these fillers and things. It's, a, it's more, much more artistic and creative when we're rejuvenating faces in the office, and I've enjoyed, I enjoy that immensely. But my real passion is surgical rejuvenation, and there's a time and a place for surgery. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the common procedures we perform and how that's done. Um, so let's jump in here. Blepharoplasty is really a, a term for eyelid lift, and eyelid lifts have become more sophisticated in recent years and have become actually less invasive. And a perfect example is what I just showed you. We now can use fillers to take away dark circles and therefore, there's a lot of times we don't need to uh, take out fat of the lower eyelid. We can just use fillers to fill in the hollows. Um, so let's just show some eyelid procedures. Here's a patient who's got heaviness of the lids. Um, eyelids are the first area to show signs of aging in the face because the skin is very, very thin, and we blink 20 times a minute, and the skin starts to wrinkle, and you develop creases. And so. Uh, you know, the extra skin in the upper lid can make the lid a little bit heavy, a little tired appearing. So sculpting out a little bit of the extra skin of the eyelid. You know, we will take out fat if there's extra fat or bulges, but uh, we're not looking to accelerate the aging change. We don't want people to look hollow. So many times it's more of a skin operation to get rid of the loose skin. But you can see how nicely this has brightened up this patient's eye. She goes from kind of a heavy, tired eye appearance to a very bright, youthful eye with a nice upsweep to the, to the eyes. Now, she did have more than an eye, eye, a blepharoplasty or eyelid surgery. We took out some skin of the upper lid. We did take out a little fat from inside her lower lid, but there's no skin incisions on the lower lid. And she did have a laser to tighten up the skin, and that's why the skin looks smoother and softer around the mid-face. A lot of those sunspots have been eliminated. Another patient with very heavy lids and a very heavy brow as well. And so in her case, we did an endoscopic brow lift, which I'll talk about next. But just in terms of the eyelids, again, we're not looking to accelerate the aging change. We don't want people to look hollow, and we really don't want people to look different. We want them to look refreshed. So she doesn't look different. She still has that full brow appearance that she had pre-op. 
but her eyes are much more open, much more youthful, and obviously she's probably seeing a lot better getting those heavy lids and brows corrected. Uh, again, a more dramatic example of really heavy droopy eyelids. And in, in here, you know, when you're when the skin is drooping over the edge of the eyelid, where you're losing some of peripheral vision insurance, this is the one area where insurance sometimes will help uh, with facial surgery: is upper eyelid blepharoplasty, and that is something you know we test for in our office. Um, if anybody's you know that's of interest, but. Um, you know, here the skin is, you know, clearly drooping over the lashes, and that's a fairly good assessment. If you can't see your lashes because the skin is drooping over, it's probably affecting your vision. Um, the lower eyelids, he's got dramatic fat pockets, so he's clearly here's an area where fat does need to be removed. And after treatment, you know, his eyes are much bright-eyed and open, and uh, the bags have been removed from the lower lids, and gives him a much more um, attractive and less tired and heavy appearance. Uh, endoscopic brows um, are, in my opinion, one of the biggest advances in the surgical rejuvenation of the face. When I first started in this business 20 years ago and was training, a lot of the brow lifts were done with open lifts, which entailed you know, larger incisions in the hair-bearing scalp. Uh, and nowadays, I never do that. All my uh, brow lifts are done endoscopically. And so we can make very tiny incisions in the hair uh, up in the scalp. And through those little incisions, use our delicate instruments to release the tissue along the brow. And then uh, uh, pull this up and reshape the brow to the position we want. It, it's very, very elegant because we can do it through very small incisions that even your hairdresser can't find. They heal very fast. We don't have to cut or move the hair at all. Um, it's a very quick operation and there's much less downtime because it really reduces the swelling and uh, potential for any numbness. And um, we have more control over the shape of the brow, which is the most important part, being able to shape the brow to what you want. Um, so let's just look at a couple patients. You know, a lot of people come in for consultations regarding heavy eyelids and want to know what we can do with their eyes. But we always have to look at the brow because as the brow drops, it makes your eyelid appear heavier. And sometimes you can just do the eyelid, and sometimes we just do the brow, and sometimes you need to do both. But we have to deter determine that with a very careful assessment. But this patient you can see on the left has droopy brows. Um, the, the, the tissue between her eyes on the bridge of her nose is widened, and that's one of the signs when you start to see wrinkles on the bridge of the nose. And then uh, if you follow her eyebrows out, you will see some of those little wrinkles in the eyebrows as it gets out to the outer part of the eyebrow. That indicates that that tissue has dropped and it's starting to collect around the eye. So you can see with an endoscopic brow lift, we've now lifted the brows. It's smoothed out the nasal bridge. And then where the brow comes out, you get this nice convexity where the brow bone is and an excellent smoothing of the tissue uh, down into the lateral canthal angle, the tissue on the outside corner of the eye. So it really opens up the eye and smooths the tissue, not only throughout the forehead, but in the bridge of the nose and on the outer corner of the eye. And again, uh, you know, even a more dramatic example, here you can see the creases between the eyes and the multiple creases at the outer corners uh, there. And with the lift, it's nicely smoothed that area out. And she also had a laser resurfacing, so again, uh, uh, the skin is much smoother as a result of tightening of, with the laser, but the shape of the brow is dramatically improved. CO2 laser resurfacing, and we're coming down the home stretch here, um, you know, is a technology that's been around since the 90s, and, um, and we don't use it as much as we used to because we have all these great non-surgical techniques for tightening and smoothing and removing brown spots and red spots. But there's still an indication for, for this procedure, and I still do several every month, because when you get to a certain point of sun damage, the best technique to remove that sun damage is CO2. And, and here's a typical patient, and this is not uncommon at all in Florida. You know, we all get a lot of sun, we're all living longer, we get to a point where you have a lot of sun damage, lots of wrinkles, lots of sunspots. So the value of the CO2 laser is in a single procedure, you can remove all of the sunspots, and you can tighten the skin. And the degree of tightening you get to the skin is unparalleled. There's nothing else that can give you that degree of tightening. It's typically 70 to 90% of the wrinkles will be eliminated in a single treatment. 
and it can make a dramatic difference in the appearance of the skin. And you can see on the slide on the right, which is several months out, um, it's brand new skin. It's tight. It's smooth. There aren't the sunspots. The wrinkles are, you know, are dramatically improved. And that's very typical for CO2 laser, that kind of a result. So when you get to this degree of sun damage where there's this many wrinkles, uh, CO2 laser is a great option. And around the mouth, although CO2 laser does work very well, I also do what's called uh, perioral dermabrasion. This is a sanding technique. I know a lot of we looked at the questions prior to this uh, last night, and there was a lot of questions about the gold standard for uh, creases of the lip. And really with upper lip creases, you have sort of two choices. You can go the non-surgical route using low-dose Botox with some filler. We can also use the fractional laser in the office and get a gradual smoothing and tightening. But again, those techniques are not going to work as well as, as surgical laser or dermabrasion. And dermabrasion can be performed right in the clinic too. And this is just a sanding of the, of the lip where we shave down the surface of the skin. It takes about a week or 10 days to heal and it'll be pink for several weeks after that. But the end result, as you can see on the slide on the right, is very smooth skin. And you can see there's still some pinkness there, so she's still healing. This is probably two months out from the treatment. The pinkness will gradually fade over time. But in terms of smoothing of that tissue, um, there's nothing that works as well as dermabrasion for upper lip creases. Last thing I want to talk about, harmonious rejuvenation of the face. And this sort of pulls it all together. And then you know we'll open it up for questions if we have time here. Um, the, um, you know, the concept of harmonious rejuvenation is a really important concept when it comes to surgery because uh, back in the early 90s um, when I was doing you know, facial rejuvenation, it was more common that we might do like a brow lift in the upper and lower lids or we might do a lower face and neck lift. We didn't do you know, everything at once very often. And then about mid-90s we started doing upper and lower face together. And it was interesting because the level of patient satisfaction just really shot up. And the reason was it was harmonious. It's very, very powerful when you address the face as a whole, uh, one harmonious unit, and you make it look right. It is, it's amazing. It looks beautiful, but it also looks natural. And natural is the key. And it, it's funny to say this, but honestly, when you take a face like the patient here who came in and said, gee, I'm looking tired and you know, not real pleased with how I'm looking, I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm interested in talking about rejuvenation. Well, you know, the face is all aged at about the same rate. She's got some wrinkles in the forehead in between the eyes. She's got some changes around her eyes, some loose skin, some hollowness. She's got jowling, she's got neck laxity, and unfortunately we tend to accumulate fat in our neck with age, which makes it heavier. And so, you know, where do you start, where do you stop? Well, the answer is if we can do everything at once, it's, it's going to give her a superior result. So let's go to the next slide. And, you know, here she is pre-op and post-op. So what we did for her is we did some Botox to the forehead and glabella we, uh, between the brows, and we did... Um, uh, endoscopic brow lift to lift the forehead, uh, upper and lower lid blepharoplasty, as well as some fillers for the dark circle under the eyes. Um, we also did some fillers for these folds here around the mouth. And then we did neck liposuction and a lower face and neck lift. And let's go to the next slide because I think the three-quarter slide is a much easier way to see. And you can see you know, this is really the goal in facial rejuvenation. I heard another surgeon say this at a meeting a couple years ago, and it really stuck with me because it's true. What we're trying to do in surgical rejuvenation of the face is to reshape your face to a more youthful profile. That's really what the goal is. And, you know, in this case, we've really hit a home run. She has a nice, soft, full, round face. There's no tension. There's no pulling. There's no stigma of surgery at all. But she has a very, very youthful face. Nice jawline, nice neckline, nice smooth contour to the brow, nice full mid-face, uh, and it all blends together. And, you know, that's where volume is important, too. When you have this nice full cheek area, it is very youthful. Some of that can be recreated in the clinic. But as far as, you know, the remainder of it, lower face and neck, you know, that, that's a surgical problem and best treated with surgery. 
Uh, and I should add that you know the surgical procedures now, you know, are the advances in the way we do them and in anesthesia have greatly improved. So we now only do IV sedation, just like a twilight sleep, like you're having a colonoscopy. You kind of have a nice rest while you have the procedure. The you know biggest procedures I do where I'll do everything: brow, lids, face, neck. Um, take about three hours under IV sedation, and people wake up pretty quickly and go home. I had two facelifts today, and both those patients I just spoke to before the seminar, and they're very comfortable at home, just having a bite to eat, uh, and and doing really well. And I'll see them in the morning. So it, it's not nearly a, as daunting as people often think it is, based on something they heard from somebody ten or twenty years ago. It really is uh, a very safe and straightforward procedure nowadays. Um, here again, we're just going to run through some face and neck lifts. This patient had an endoscopic brow face and neck lift. You can see nice improvement in the contours of the neckline and jawline. But again, notice the natural appearance. Um, you know, no stigma of surgery, no pulled earlobes, no uh, visible incision lines. Um, next. Uh, again, I think we'll show the side view again of this patient, but pre and post op again. You know, kind of uniform aging of the face and uniform rejuvenation with the brow, face, and neck. And again, you can't see, uh, you know, nice jawline, nice mid face, nice neck line, very natural appearance. Uh, again, no visible incision lines, no distortion of the ears or earlobes or any, any of that. Um, this is our receptionist, Cindy, and this is two weeks out from surgery. This was a few years back, uh, I think 2007. But anyway, uh, just, you know, to show, you know, really downtime is, you know, I always say one to two weeks. Now she's two weeks out. She clearly still has some swelling through the mid face, a little bit puffy, but really no visible bruising at all. And she was back working. That's how we got her picture. <laughs> uh, so um, again, endoscopic brow, face, and neck. I just sort of run through a lot just to show you a number of different patients. She has beautiful skin. I love this type of consult because when they have nice skin, everything redrapes so beautifully. Her jawline and neckline look marvelous post-op and very, very natural. Uh, and men, I want to mention men because men's faces are different. The shape is different, the skin is different, and the goals are different, and that's really important. So we did a brow lift on him. I did it through his natural creases here in his forehead. We made a couple incisions, one small one here and one over here. We released the entire forehead, lift the brow, but you can see he doesn't have a high arch brow like we might create for, for most of the women. We want to keep it flat and a male shaped brow. Very important. You want, you don't, and you've seen this on TV with some of the male actors and you wonder how does that happen? But um, it's just poor judgment. We really you know, want to preserve the male shape to the face. So lower face and neck lift, a nice tightening of the jawline, neckline, a nice lift to the brow, but keep the male pattern brow so that he looks natural and uh, appropriate. And I think we just have a couple more. I want to mention um, chin implants because uh, things do change fast. And we used to do a lot of mid-face implants, and I virtually never do mid-face implants anymore because we can do that with fillers now. And it's non-surgical and much easier. But chin implants can really enhance the result of a lower face and neck lift. And here's a dramatic example of what we call a weak chin, where the chin is recessed relative to the anterior plane of the lips. And so to get a good result with a face and neck lift, it helps to bring that chin forward. And we do that through with a uh, very small soft implant that fits in right through a small incision under the chin. You can see we've given him this projection. It's very natural because it tapers into the jawline and you don't feel it or you know, really see it at all. You can't tell you have an implant. It just improves the contours. And then we do the face and neck lift and reestablish a nice jawline and neckline. And here's the key. You see this angle here called the cervical mental angle. We go for this 90 degree cervical mental angle. And you can see pre-op, he virtually has no cervical mental angle. It just is a kind of a slope here. So uh, really reestablished a beautiful jawline and neckline for him and made a huge difference, which wouldn't have been as good if we had not used the chin implant. And another girl that's a little less dramatic. This is a younger woman who has a very full neck and a little bit of a weak chin. And you can see the weakness of the chin, but very full neck. Again, no cervical mental angle, just this blunting, no jawline. Because she was young and had good skin, we were able to do liposuction. So a tiny incision under each earlobe, small incision under the chin, use the chin implant to bring the chin forward. 
And then we did lipo uh, of the neck here, this whole area. And that takes out the fat. And then the liposuction itself also stimulates the skin to contract. And so we get tightening and lifting of the skin. Looks like we've done a facelift. But all we've done is liposuction the neck and a small chin implant. And I think we have another picture of her that shows three quarters view of how she looks. And wow, did it make a big difference for her. It made her look about 50 pounds lighter. She wasn't really heavy. She was a little, little bit. But um, just by removing that heaviness of the neck and giving her, her jawline back, it just the facial profile was greatly improved. And it really made her look tremendously better. Uh, and uh, she's a patient we've you know, just seen recently who, and that's holding up beautifully. So in summary, um, uh, facial rejuvenation is changing very rapidly. Lots of new technology, lots of new materials, lots of new techniques. Earlier treatments are clearly on the rise, and office-based treatments are clearly on the rise. And there's so much more we can do right in the office. And surgery has become more predictable, less invasive, with less downtime, too. So the improvements are in all facets of this. Uh, and it really makes it a very exciting field for me to be in. The real challenge is staying on top of everything new that's coming down the line and, and sorting through what works and what doesn't and, uh, and trying to come up with the best solutions for each patient. Uh, so Catherine, I guess at this point I'll turn it over. You've been fielding the questions, so maybe you can tell us. Uh, uh, sure. Wow, that was terrific. I've actually found several procedures I'm interested in. So we are going to open it up to questions now. Please, I'm going to go ahead and monitor them. Please uh, put in anonymously your questions and or comments. Let us know what you thought about this um, first ever patient webinar because we would like to get your comments and your feedback on that. And I did speak with Dr. Flaherty about offering you something. So let me just show you what we've done here. Uh, Dr. Flaherty, can you click the button? I can't seem to click it. I spoke with him, and he's agreed to give you a complimentary. Can you go to the next slide? Oh, there it is. Whoops, 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 whoops. Um, he's offered to give you a complimentary surgical consultation plus a $50 gift card towards any treatment performed in a Zool Medical Spa. And here's why. Because so many of the questions I got um, throughout the registration as well as tonight, so many of them are very specific to your own, um, your own facial structure, your own concerns. So it's just best that you actually talk with him and, and you guys talk together and find out what's your best solution. Um, so, but here's what's happening. He has agreed to this, but I can't leave it open forever. So we're going to ask you to call right away because this offer is going to have to expire in one week. And so it's going to expire next Tuesday, May 8th. And all you have to do is call his office. It's area code 239-415-7576. Just call before next Tuesday to schedule your appointment and or your consultation. And you don't have to have it done by next Tuesday unless you want to, of course. But we do need you to make that appointment by next Tuesday. So, and I want to thank Dr. Flaherty for doing that because the questions we're getting are just so specific to what you're most interested in. Um, but let me, let me field some of these. Uh, Dr. Flaherty, a lot of questions have come in about the difference between Othera and surgery. And it's kind of boiling down to how long would an Othera treatment last versus how long would a facelift last? And when do I know which one is the best for me? I know that's a loaded question, but do you have an answer for that? Because it came up quite a bit. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's a good question, and, and I, I didn't address the uh, duration with Althera. You know, Althera is a fairly new technology, and clearly it can give us some short-term results that look pretty good. Uh, again, you can see that they didn't really rival the results of a facelift. Um, you know, the company, you know, is, is, is standing by two years with the results for Althera. Now, obviously, there's very individual variation. Um, in fact, you know, when they pulled a group of patients who had Althera, about 85% of them said they were very happy with the treatment, even though the results they got were not equivalent to facelifts. But their expectations were appropriate for a non-surgical procedure. They're going to get some tightening and lifting, but not, again, equivalent to a facelift. Um, you know, the facelift is the gold standard for rejuvenation of the lower face and neck. And, you know, we throw out the 10-year time frame. We say, well, how long will it last 10 years? But the reality is the changes we're making at surgery are permanent changes. You know, the skin isn't going to re-stretch to the extent it did 
let's say somebody's 55 or 60 or 65 when you do it, and you're rejuvenating that, you know, turning the clock back, you know, probably 10, 20 years, and then they will start aging again, but they're never going to get back to that point again. The fat we remove with liposuction in the neck is gone forever. It doesn't regrow. Um, the skin that's removed is gone forever. You know, the deep tightening is long lasting. Sure, everybody's tissues are different and everybody ages different. And some people, you know, the, the tissues will stretch and loosen again. What typically we find when somebody comes in for, let's say, a secondary face if they had a face of 10 or 20 years ago, it's a much, much different procedure. Often it's a small incision lift where we just do a little tucking where the skin has gotten loose. And in my opinion, I think, you know, in the next 10, 20 years, we're probably going to find that there are other things we can do, such as the fillers or maybe, you know, the newer versions of Altera to tighten and, and kind of maintain that. So I consider facial rejuvenation, surgical rejuvenation, a one-time event. Uh, and, and I think for most people it is. You know, if you address everything at once, you have one surgery, one recovery period. And from that point forward, it's let's maintain your skin. Let's practice healthy habits for living, good nutrition, exercise, and do the appropriate things you need in, you know, from time to time, fillers, Botox, light lasers, the things we can do to keep you looking good. Um, also along those lines with Althera, I'm getting a lot of questions about can they also get their injectables done at the same time as Althera, or do you have to do one at one time and then come back and do another? Yeah, we have to stagger that for a couple of reasons. One is we really don't know what the effects of the ultrasound energy would be on a filler. So putting a filler in and then doing it right after wouldn't be, wouldn't, I mean, you know, there's some risk of maybe it would dissolve the filler faster than it would otherwise go away. And on the flip side, when you have Althera done, there is a little bit of swelling. So we wouldn't do fillers that same day because it might distort your tissues. But we don't have to wait a long time. If you've had an Althera treatment a week later, we can do fillers. Uh, but we would do Althera first and do the fillers afterwards. Excellent. Uh, wh what do you think about, I'm getting a lot of questions about fillers and lumpiness. Any, any issues with the lumpiness? Well, technique is important with fillers. You know, I would say that for sure. Um, you can see when I presented the fillers, I talked about hyaluronic acid products first. And that's because they are the most natural and the safest. And what I mean by safe is with hyaluronic acid products, Restylane and Juvederm, we actually have an enzyme that dissolves those. So, you know, you can see the tissues around the eyes are very, very delicate. We do a lot of filler in the eye area. I've seen patients from time to time, some of my own patients, some from elsewhere who come in and say, you know, I had some Restylane done and it's a little bit lumpy here or there. And you can actually inject an enzyme and immediately dissolve that. So it has that that reversibility, which is really, really nice, especially for delicate areas. It's not often that we do that. Um, the biggest thing is placement, getting it placed in the right place. And we do kind of massage it into place to have it mold in the way you want it. And if you do it right the first time, you know, lumpiness is, is, is a rare problem. So that can be avoided for the most part with good technique. Okay, great. And I am getting multiple questions about scarring for any kind of, even the facelifts or especially facelifts, what about scars? Should there be some, will they, what, what's the story there with scars? Well, you know, anytime you make an incision, a full thickness incision of the skin, you will get a scar. There's no avoiding that. Scar is just disorganized collagen that always occurs when a skin, skin heals. So the key is making the incisions in discrete places that, where they're not visible. And that, that's the key to a face If We have the choice of where we make the incisions, which is good. We can pick very thin skin, discrete areas where you don't see them. Um, I should add, though, that the 1540, our um, uh, laser, the fractional non-ablative laser, is a fabulous laser for scarring. Uh, it softens and blends scars in. I had a bike accident, uh, you know, uh, about a year ago and had a laceration. And Debbie, my PA, treated it, and it's just about in, in, imperceptible now. Um, so, you know, if, if, you know, scarring is ever an issue for any reason, the um, fractional laser works fantastic to blend it in. It works very well with acne scars, too, even old acne scars. It remodels the collagen in a way that smooths the skin. So. Uh, that's a really a, a fantastic utilization of that laser, which we don't promote very much, but it does work incredibly well. 
Okay, great. You know what? I didn't realize it was so late. Um, we should probably wrap it up. It's getting a little late there on the East Coast. And I want to reiterate that it's so important for you to take advantage of this special offer that Dr. Flaherty has agreed to. You're entitled to a complimentary surgical procedure consultation with him. So why don't you go in and talk with him about this and talk about your own concerns because I'm so many of our questions I'm afraid to ask because they're so specific to you. And I just think it's important that you meet with him and point out what your interests are and point out what bothers you. And the two of you can come up with a good solution. And then also take advantage of that $50 gift card in Azul Medical Spa. They just offer some fantastic skin treatments to either prepare your skin ahead of time for surgery or, you know, keep your skin in great shape after surgery. So please do call, call him, call Dr. Flaherty, and I will also uh, put that gift card in your email because I'm going to ask you to print it out and bring it with you at your appointment. So with that, do you have any last comments to make, Dr. Flaherty? Yeah, I just want, for clarification, I just wanted to mention one thing. Um, you know, uh, you know, this is a limited time offer, of course, but um, as Catherine mentioned earlier, all you need to do is just call for the appointment by the 8th. Obviously, you know, um, our clinic is pretty full as it is the next week, so, it, you know, you don't certainly have to be seen in that time period. And uh, I also just wanted to thank Catherine very much for emceeing this because this is very exciting and I really enjoyed it. And I want to thank you all for attending our, our first webinar and I'm sure it won't be our last. This was really fun and I enjoyed it.